So this interview coming up right now is brought to you by EmployeeEscapePlan.com. And if you are a solopreneur, entrepreneur, or you're looking to just get to this place where you're, you're living your passion, your love of life is just exuding and flowing through you, and you want the systems, the principles, the marketing, the sales to be able to generate your income, to be able to create your dreams and desires and live a life that you love, fulfilling, serving people, Mr. Joe Nicasio is an amazing mentor, coach, and advisor for Burn It Up Coaching and Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, and I highly recommend him. www.employeeescapeplan.com. Go have a conversation with Joe. He'll change your life. Now, for the man of the hour. Let's pull this out. Grant Finlay Shiras. Shiras. I'll ask him how to pronounce that. How do you pronounce that, Grant? Shiras. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Grant is a successful startup CEO and entrepreneur. He's the co founder and CEO of Parkbench.com and president of Baller Media. I love that. That is awesome. <laughs> With over 10 years of experience building and leading successful sales teams, Grant is a celebrated business leader driven every day by his passion for helping business owners realize their true potential. Grant's experience leading parkbench.com from 80K to 500,000 in monthly revenue has made Parkbench the number one real estate marketing platform in North America. Now, he devotes his energy and time to helping businesses excel at digital marketing. Grant, are you ready to rock this, brother? Ready to rock. Ready to rock. We're going to sprint in this thing and deliver some massive freaking value, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Let's Dude, do it. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to become. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dude. Thank you for, for taking time out of your schedule. You're building amazing things, impacting people's lives, creating amazing company culture. I watched some of your videos, man. It's just like who you are is just epic. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely, man. So we're going to dive right in to the theme of the day, and it is the gifts of life and death. So Grant, how has the gift of life, this present moment, as well as the, the gift of death, the concept of we might die any moment, how has that showed up for you? How has that shaped your perspective in life? Some deep stuff right off Let's the bat. I love deep, it. Baby. Let's go. Let's do it. So uh, the, the, like for me, I've actually – the concept of death, mm -hmm. I actually don't fear mm – -hmm. for my whole life, I've never actually feared – death it like dying you know and i have all these dreams all the time of how i die and actually and, and and this is like maybe some weird part about me but i would dream about dying in some way shape or form and then i'd be and then i'd see what happened the whole dream was what happens after grant dies mm. and then if i didn't like it then that would give me a sign of what i needed to do differently in my life wow. Uh, so that I liked what happened. I liked what happened after my death. I liked what happened at my funeral. Uh, I liked what people said about me after. So, so I never actually feared the death side of things and then actually used it. And maybe this is part of the gift, you know, used it to try and guide me to what to do in my life so that I'd be happy with what people said about me and thought about me after I left. Um, but what I do fear, which is, like death in business and death in health and death in relationships, you know, like, like that is the stuff that freaks me out mm -hmm. and gets me to take action and do stuff. Um, and, and one of the things that I've taken, uh, Grant Cardone says this, he says, he says, I always go broke. And I was like, what? I was like, Why would you want to go broke? But now after running this business, I totally get it. Um, Park Bench has been redlining hmm. for for five years. Like we can't have a bad month. <laughs> like seriously, like and, and and for the first two years, this was the most stressful thing ever. Wow. But then you became numb to it. But that still didn't get rid of the 
uh, the drive that it gave that like, mm-hmm. listen, we need to produce. We need to right. get results every single month. We cannot have a good, a bad month. We're not venture backed. Well, like we got to keep pushing because forward. because you expand, right? You're expanding, constantly expanding. Correct. So that expansion says, hey, like we're going to bring on new team members, but that also means that our margin is like still nothing. So we got to keep expanding, keep growing, keep pushing the limits and constantly in that like red zone. <laughs> to- to- totally. I and, love and, it. and that, and that um, fear of death from a business mm. standpoint or any time I see my health going down mm. and I start then imagining what might happen if I let this continue. Mm. Um, same thing with relationships. If something is bad happening in the relationship and all of a sudden my mind goes down this path of, oh my God, if I don't fix this thing that I do, this habit or whatever, then what's going to happen in my life? That stuff gets to me um, because usually all that stuff is in your control and anything that's in my control, uh, I don't want to, you know, not get what I want. Right. Fame. Which sounds like really selfish and stuff, but, it, but as long, you know, and as long, but as long as it's in good faith of other people and serving yeah. other people, then, then yeah. another one of my principles is be selfish, you know, mm. and make sure you're doing the things that are advancing you forward. Yeah. As long as you're not a piece of, you know, yeah. so yeah. dude, I love it. I love it. Cause that, that self-interest is so important because nobody's going to come and wipe our ass for us. Right. Like, yeah, nobody's, totally. like we, we are responsible for ourselves, for our happiness, for our perspective, our outlook and be empowered by that. Cause it's a gift. Yep. So one of the things I want to talk about with the whole gift thing, which was, <laughs> I got this recently and mm-hmm. it was, it was one of the best ways of phrasing this ever. Um, that I've heard. So, so yes, like, you know, there's this gift of life, which, you know, if you are lucky enough to grow up in a good area, good community, have good parents, have good friends, go to a good school, um, given an opportunity, get a job, like all these things that are perceived as great gifts, Mm -hmm. definitely make you happy. They definitely move you forward. And these are the things that are great about life is when these nice surprises happen. Mm -hmm. And the problem is most times, uh, most people, then say, yeah, but I don't have this. I'm missing this. I didn't get this. I got this problem. I got this challenge. And so here are the two lines uh, that I got. And I believe this was from Tony Robbins when I went to Date with Destiny. And he goes, the biggest problem we all have Hmm. is that we think we shouldn't have any. Hmm. And what problems are and like and we all can internalize the okay well without challenge you can't have um what is it without adversity you can't no have reward. opportunity yeah right, opportunity right, right um one of my favorite lines in in business is you can't have a testimony mm, of success a without a test yeah. can't be a, have a victory without being mm. a victim mm. and the other one that he put in place was um Problems are gifts yeah. calling you to grow. Mm. 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 And so I brought that back to my team because all the time when if you're in any, whatever role you're in the company and as an owner of a company, like there's, there's pro, quote unquote problems mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all the time. All the time. <laughs> and now it's just like, ah, it's a gift. Yeah. You know, this person's not buying. It's, it's a, a gift. Good. You're going to become, become a better salesperson. <laughs> Oh, the, the, the Facebook changed your algorithm. It's a gift. <laughs> a gift yes. You're going to become a better marketer. Wow. You know, this person just quit. Hey, we need to improve our system so we can hire quickly and train someone up. <laughs> you know, um, so, so that, that's really been a, a new perspective I've seen about seeing everything as mm. a gift. It's mm. easy to see the good stuff as gifts. Um, but how can you see the what we normally and what most people will see as problems and as challenges and see them as also as gifts? Hmm. How so, can this be a good thing? That's the question that I tell my team always to ask. This is, this is gold because um, for everyone listening, Grant is not some foo-foo, think about the positive, like, you know, like always be happy kind of guy. You freaking, like when I talk to you on the call, I was like, dude, you're freaking real. And you're going to tell people how it is. And we're going to dive into that in this conversation. But dude, Grant, I, I just really acknowledge you, man, for your philosophy of, of business and life that it really calls people to be great. You call people to be like greatness around you, man. We can already sense that just off the beginning of this call, man. Cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's, 
you know, and, and this was like another thing that just recently came and I appreciate, you know, saying like calling people to greatness and yeah. stuff. And, and I do, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy, like I just did a webinar today um, on to help educate like realtors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and I was, you know, just recently I'm doing this whole PR thing and just recently like was featured in this like thought leadership on thrive mm-hmm. global or some yes. on this website. And um, I was like, yeah, but I didn't really try. Like I just tried to like do me and, and, and make me better. Like I, again, I was selfish about trying to improve myself. And, and then the thing about the way our team works in the company, because I don't have time to manage you. Mm -hmm. I got to start up. You need to be able to be self-sufficient, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a pace Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to lead and you're just going to follow. And that's, and that's, I think what, what the easy part about calling others to greatness or helping other Mm -hmm. people out is I think, especially with the millennial generation, you don't need to baby them or handhold them mm-hmm. you just need to go be as great Show. as you can be yep. and and our generation is going to be like i want to beat you, you know, <laughs> yeah. or i want to or, or i want to be a part of this like yes. i want to hold on to your coattails yeah. or other people are like I- i'm gonna beat you um <laughs> and that's and that's makes it a whole lot easier because then you just yeah. stay focused on you yeah. dude this is brilliant. Love it. Love it, man. So let's dive in a little bit more to what you're working on today. What is Park Bench? Give us the, the uh, you know, DL. I got, I, got an amazing, I got an amazing response in store for this question. And I think I'm going to carry this. When people say, like, what is Park Bench? <laughs> I, I made up, like, like the, the, I made this idea up. Like, mm-hmm. this is, like, just totally a made-up idea that it's now a business. And... When we first start, when we, we got invited to Silicon Valley for the 500 startups and, and they were like, so what are you? And, and I, I had always had issues answering this question. And I know there's lots of entrepreneurs out there struggle with answering the question of like, what are you yeah. when you have this business? And they were like, okay, well, you're, you're a SaaS company. And I'm like, I, I guess maybe you, you guys may know better than me. And the other person's <laughs> like, no, you're ad tech. And, and they're like, no, you're just, you're just a, a marketing company. And someone's like, no, you're a platform as a service. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> and, and, I, and I want to just be like, listen, I don't know what I am. All I know is I solve problems and I make money. Mm, love it. That's it. I like, and, it. And, and, there's, and there's three and, – and I don't just solve one problem. And that's the other reason why I was a hard time articulating like, mm. what we do because I solve three problems. I solve one problem for three different groups of people. The first problem is um, – homeowners like local news is a broken channel some communities or neighborhoods just don't even have a a, a newspaper or magazine or even like a local blog put on by someone yet there's all this content out on the internet Mm -hmm. that there are pieces that are about a neighborhood and so i wanted to create a resource so that i could first stay up to date with what was going on in my community Mm -hmm. and lo and behold other people wanted the same thing And then I just told my friends, I was like, listen, I don't have time to write content about my neighborhood Mm -hmm. because I wanted to create this website for my neighborhood to solve my my problem as a professional, which is give value to my community, have something to offer the homeowners and business owners in my community Mm -hmm. so I can have a reason to go talk to them, build a relationship, give value, and in turn, wait for people to use me and refer me because I just believe in the law of reciprocity. And so that is one of the problems that we also solve is... If you're a relationship and referral-based professional, whether realtor, fitness, mortgage, contracting, and you want to get out in your community and and build your database and sphere of influence and give them Mm -hmm. value so that in turn, at some point, they'll use you or refer you, we now give people this amazing item of value because Mm -hmm. it was first my item of value for my business. And then I looked around my neighborhood and said, what do homeowners want? And they wanted this local news source. Mm -hmm. And so I went to my friends and I said, I don't have time to write this content can you just like, but, th- but there's content on the internet. Like just, you guys are developers. You guys make shit up. I'm like, gr- find it, grab it, organize it, <laughs> categorize it, put it on this website. And every day just have an update. Yeah. And they were like, Grant, that doesn't exist. And I was like, you guys are developers. You create things. And I was like, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> and I was like, it can't be that hard. Like, you know, I've seen other like aggregation things. Right, like, ag- right. like there's a deal aggregators website. I've seen some news. I'm like, I'm just putting it all together in one. <laughs> and they were like, uh, okay. And then luckily I have some amazing tech friends. And then I met this amazing uh, co-founder of mine <laughs> who was conveniently 
Like this is like the gifts of life. <laughs> he was conveniently working on a similar technology for his wife wow. who was a realtor so that she, when she was at her listing appointments, would have her iPad and be able to sh- tell the people who are looking to move into the area uh-huh. – about the neighborhood, the events, the news, the deals, the building permits, the crime, the safety, all this stuff. Wow. So he was already building this tool. We wanted it. So we joined forces. And then he figured out how to build this Google-like for neighborhoods technology. So long. So now fast forward, if you go to any Park Bench neighborhood website, we're the number one source of local content on the internet, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. There's no one who's got more information about a neighborhood in one place Wow. updating every single day than us. And that was like a cool check, revolutionized mm-hmm. local news to give people their local news source because that is what people want. They want to know what's going on around them. On demand. The, on demand. And, the, yeah. and, 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 and it's the laziness factor. I don't want to travel all over the city for stuff. Can mm-hmm. I just like walk down the street and get what I want? Mm-hmm. So, so that was problem number one that Park Bench solves. The second one, which I'm most, this is what I'm most proud of as a small business owner, mm-hmm. is... Um, like I had a fitness company, Amanda, my wife, she was a realtor mm-hmm. and real like realtors won't use necessarily sites like Yelp or Yellow Pages or Groupon, mm-hmm. you know, but, but fitness people, you'll put your boot camps up on Groupon and offer oh, yeah. discounts to get people to do it. So we'll food and drink places, health, beauty, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, but they take so much of your money. Mm-hmm. And I said, and then I went out in the neighborhood and I was like, guys, like <laughs> tech friends, Problem number two, I was like, you got to be able to just like build a website where a business owner can just like log on mm-hmm. and, and put up their a deal to get a new customer to incentivize them to come try them out, reward their customers for writing reviews because they need reviews. Uh, if they have a, food, you know, Monday through Sunday food and drink specials, they should put that up. Mm-hmm. You know, I walk around the neighborhood, I see those sandwich boards and like red t- sticker sales mm-hmm. on the windows. Mm-hmm. I'm like, just get that. I want that online. <laughs> you know, I don't want to walk around the neighborhood and see all that stuff. I just, I just want a place that all the businesses just put it online. And, and I'm going to help them make money because if I can help them make money mm-hmm. and I won't charge them to use this website, then like I just know law of reciprocity, they'll, they'll just float business back my way. Totally. Like I don't have to ask. It'll just happen. And again, they're like, Grant, that's like Yelp meets Groupon meets Eventbrite. Like you, you want all this functionality on one site. And I was like, yeah. They're like, that's not a good idea for a tech company. I'm like, I'm not building a tech company. I am building a marketing solution for my business. Yes. And they were like, okay, yeah, sure, fine. And so they built it for me. <laughs> and like, again, this was not a business. This was just my idea to help me make money. And I, and right. I solved this problem for the businesses of my neighborhood, solved this problem for the homeowners. And then my problem, which was I can't door knock because we're in a condo-based community. Mm. Nor is it pleasant. And mm. cold calling, do not call this in Canada, are insane. And so, like, I don't want to do that. Plus, again, unpleasant. Right. But I, but I was like, but I don't want to advertise because that's just like, you know, you pay and you just cross your fingers. Mm-hmm. Um, this is before I understood, you know, lead generation funnels and all that stuff online. But I still believe if you're a service professional, the mm. foundation of your business should be relationships and referrals. Totally. Um, and so. In order to do that, you need to meet lots of people every single day, give them value, have a reason to stay in touch and follow up, continue to add value. And then through some conversation, ask them if and when they need your service. Yeah. It doesn't need to be overcomplicated. Just, mm. just talk to people and have a relationship whereby it's not salesy and cheesy to be like, hey, are you in the market for what I got going on? <laughs> no, that's okay. When might you? Anytime? <laughs> All right. I'll just make a note, put in my CRM and get back yeah. to you later. Yeah. And, and so I solved that for myself. And so now I had this amazing community website popped off in my neighborhood. And, and, and again, now fast forward, Park Bench is now that idea that I did for me. I'm now d- doing it for other neighborhoods all across Canada and the United States, giving them this resource so homeowners can stay up to date with what's going on, giving the small business owners a free marketing platform. I figured out a revenue model where I, can ne- I will never charge small business owners wow. to be able to advertise their deals or sales or specials, their events, their promote, like everything. Mm-hmm. And, and then there's going to be one professional I work with who says, hey, I want to be the guy. I want to mm-hmm. give back to my community. I want to get to know people. And Park Bench seems to have a mechanism for me to, here's my money, and now I'm going to go give this great resource to my community. And I don't have to worry mm-hmm. about the technical side. You guys take care of that. I don't have to worry about the marketing side. You guys take care of that. I just get to go be the face. Mm-hmm. I get to be the leader. And, and that's where Baller came out with because it's short for become a local leader. Oh, and wow. Then you, and so you're a baller. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so that's what we call our clients. We call them ballers. Um, <laughs> 
and and, and so that that's what park bench is it's mm. if i was to summarize it i want to try and come up with a, a new term that some you know silicon valley can eat and <laughs> and and uh it's called the local network park bench mm. is the local network because what we're doing is we're looking at the ecosystem of of what happens and you have this we work with sponsors the sponsors then get the businesses on the board. The businesses have this free platform. They get the homeowners on board. Homeowners are getting great content, saving money. Business owners are making money without spending money. And the sponsor is now getting a big database and getting referrals and getting clients because they're, they're the ones initiating the whole uh, chain reaction. Wow. Um, so I don't know what that is. I just know that we solve those three problems really wow. well and we make money. It's beautiful, man. It's freaking beautiful. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. So, um, I'm curious. Do you do you find uh, what's the biggest um, occupation or the biggest profession jumping on park bench? So, so our core sponsor is that residential real estate professional. Got it. We cool. got some mortgage. Uh, we got some insurance agents. Um, I was in fitness and I, and, and long-term I want to work with fitness professionals as well, just cause I, it, it's a great thing for us. But totally. my wife was a realtor and then a realtor came to us and was like, I will give you money if you can give me one of these websites from my neighborhood. And I was like, really? Huh? Amanda, how many realtors do you think in Toronto would like this? And she was like, I don't know. I think a lot would. And I was like, okay, um, let's walk around Toronto with a PDF and let's show people. <laughs> let's see. And yep. people were just handing over money to us. Wow. It was. And so I was like, okay, I guess we got to do this. Uh, um, and, and, and I think that's also one of the reasons like why we did well is because we didn't mm. intend on this being a business mm. and the market told us you should do this. Mm. Wow. Um, we didn't just, force anything just about yeah. solving problems. Yeah. Damn. And it was my own. And that's why yeah. like, I love doing it because this is my own problem. Mm. Like I moved to a new neighborhood. I wasn't from Toronto, so I always needed to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. As a business owner, I wanted to make more money, but I didn't have a big budget. Mm -hmm. And then, then as a local professional, I wanted to build my database. So those were my three problems. And dude, apparently, when, there's lots of people that have those problems too. When you're your own target demographic, that like works out so well. You could just stand in in the shoes of your customer, your client. And you're like, man, I get you. <laughs> I get you. You know, you, you know how to sell to them. Yep. <laughs> And you know how to provide good customer service to them. Yep. Yep. Be, like, and that's, and that's the key to a good business. You know how to bring the money in and then you know how to make the customers happy because yeah, you were, you were number one, you were the number one first customer. Beautiful, beautiful, man. So we got a clear picture of what it is that you do and the problems that you solve. Now let's take us back to some of the growth pains of either, you know, your own personal journey and those challenges and or the growth pains of the company and, and some major roadblocks that you hit along the way. Love the gifts mm -hmm. of life and business. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, one of the things I thought was, was relevant because this start again, like this started the chain reaction that even started park bench because mm. park bench was a marketing idea for my fitness company. And the reason why I started that fitness company was because I had two weeks to pay rent and I was negative $10,000. I had no money in my bank account. My credit cards were maxed out. Mm. Um, and because I got screwed over at a startup, mm. I, worked, I worked at a startup and you know the guy just literally vanished and owed us a bunch, all the people who worked there a bunch of money, um, which I, as, a, as a competitive like, Dude, yeah. you know, I wanted oh. to fucking, you know, humiliated. How, just, who, who do you think I am? <laughs> oh my god! And and, and 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 my mentor was like, Grant, like it's over. Like mm. maybe you can do a civil right. lawsuit, and maybe you'll get money in a year. Like yeah. you got rent to pay, so just stop thinking about it and start mm. moving forward on something. Mm. Wow. Um and. I, I, I had a business degree and a fitness degree. I've always played sports. I've always liked it. I was a, a coach for tennis players and athletes and did the whole, um, that side of things. And I always, and this was like, I always felt I wasn't ready yet to go do my big fitness vision, mm. my big health and fitness vision. Mm. And my mentor was like, Grant, why do you not think you're ready? Just like start somewhere, like get in, you know, just like they say in real estate, like the key to real estate investing is get in the market. Yep. 
You know, it's, it's not, it's not wait for the right investment. It's get in the market. <laughs> um, same thing with, with entrepreneurship. If you have mm-hmm. this goal or this vision, you just got to get in somehow, some way, which I had to eat my pride and go mm-hmm. slave myself away at a good life gym which is like Canada's version of LA fitness or, or gold's gym or <laughs> whatever. And, and so um, I, ha- I did that just to get in, get out of my, you know, money hole. Mm-hmm. But the good thing about doing that was I got in the industry. I then started mm-hmm. consuming the content. I started, there were great trainers there and I started learning from them and just like absorbing as much as possible. I started to build my database out. Nice. And then that led to me having my own uh, mobile fitness business. And then the wheel started going. And so it was because I was in such a deep hole. It was literally Christmas Eve where I got the email saying, uh, we're on a spending freeze to stop working. You're not getting paid. And my parents like at Christmas day is like, so how's your startup like job? And I was like, yeah, it's great. And in my head, I'm like, I am so fucked. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> like, cause I didn't want to tell, I didn't, I said, yeah, pride. I didn't want to tell them. And so it's because yep. of that broke, like real brokenness. Mm. I would push myself to do my fitness business and then the wheels to start going. And then because of that, the uh, marketing idea, was this what now is park bench and so that was the first adversity that really helped Mm. me forward and then the next test that i had was once this thing popped off we had we went from you know thinking i wonder if realtors would pay for it to oh wow we just got sixty thousand dollars in like two months like walking around toronto like pretty Mm. easily i'm like this thing is going to work out real well i'm like let's find like a guy who's who's built sales teams before and and let's get like a build an inside sales team and we we hired this guy who had been there done that uh i'm not going to say any names because <laughs> within six weeks you know his first month he wanted to hit numbers and numbers he did and it was all fraudulent oh. um and so i had seventy thousand dollars which is all my monthly revenue f- committed fraud where it's oh, like cops called me and they're like your company is overcharging people. I'm like, what is going on? And I was in a different city looking to expand. And I just given up everything to this guy to take over for sales. Um, and, uh, and so that I had to fly back, fired everybody, went to zero, had to get back on the streets again, rebuild it. Hmm. Um, I then actually had to, and this is like a strategy that we were like, Oh, what do we do? Do we, like Toronto now hates us because mm-hmm. of this. Like all the realtors, we have a horrible reputation because of all this fraud that this guy did. And so I was like, okay, well, let's just go to Vancouver. Let's expand there. And uh, like we have a fresh reputation. And then we'll just kind of let Toronto just like cool down for a bit. We'll come back later. And lo and behold, long, fast forward. And with Toronto, we love us. Like everyone forgives, you know, right. as long as you, you know, like they'll forgive and forget. Um, and new people will become your customer. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so that was, that was the other verse, like versity kind of in year one of the business. Mm-hmm. And then in year two, like we recovered, we grew like, and this is another cool thing that, that despite having bad months, mm-hmm. we're literally in year one, we went to zero and we still made 400,000 in our first year mm-hmm. in year two. I'll talk about that time where we went to zero and had to fire everybody. And we still doubled our revenue at the end of the year, went to 800 Damn. thousand, you know, and then um, like, yeah, this January wasn't very good, but I have no problem. Like we've done a hundred to 200% every single year. And we've always had like stuff. You're just like, Oh my gosh, this company got crumble, <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden we, at the end of the year, it's like, boom, like great year, record year. <laughs> so, so nothing is ever bad. And that's mm-hmm. another like mentality because in year two, this was the really big, big one. Um, the, a bigger test for a bigger testimony was we went down to the States. So I love America and I love the U S you guys are 95% of all my clients. I love it. Um, but, uh, Canadians are like, Oh, beware. Americans are litigious. And I'm like, Oh, come on. I'm like, we're good people. We got a great company. We got a great product. You know, we'll be fine. And the very first client we ever signed up, 
biggest client ever, still to this history, the person who spent the most money ever at Park Bench, one client. She became our best friend. We came down to San Diego. We went, hung out with her every weekend. She introduced us to people. She referred us to people. It was like a great launch in America. And then, unfortunately, she was new to the business. For whatever reason, she just went from, hey, go meet Bob. I told him you're awesome, to literally the next day being like, I need all my money back. And we're like, what? Like, we gave you your service. Like, there's nothing we did wrong. Like, what's, what's wrong? Again, I'm not going to say her name. And so, and so um, she was like, yep, no, I need all my money back. And we're like, uh, no, we can't. Like, we, we, we built you the website. We provided the service. Like, can't do that. She was like, well, I'm going to file a class action lawsuit. And I'm like, what does that even mean? For one and two, I'm like, uh, on based on what, you know? And and but lo and behold, she literally went down this path and created this 400 page manifesto oh my of 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 all this stuff that she felt we did wrong. And and I showed this to a lawyer, and, and he was like, "This is unreal. This is all lies, but it looks real." Wow. And so she sent it to all of our clients, Canada, U.S., everything. And so literally, I had. Again, all these dis- – because you can dispute, you know, charges mm-hmm. and people are freaking out. She mm-hmm. says we were illegal, that, that, you know, we weren't registered with the franchise board, so we are no, not allowed to operate in America. And I'm like, we're not a franchise. <laughs> I'm like, that's why we're not registered. But, of course, if you're just a realtor and you're looking at this, you're like, oh, my God, park benches. Right. Is illegal. I can't be. I can't be a client of them. And then they dispute their charges. And again, all the revenue it made sucked out. And as a bootstrap company, you're constantly just taking money, reinvest, take money, pay bills, reinvest. So for all of it to just go out. Um, at this point, my co-founder, um, my wife, and I had another co-founder is my tech guy. And so the reason why this, this situation was even worse, it's one thing to have money like leave, like money, in my opinion, and this is a great philosophy to have, money is always replenishes. And you can always make money. You can everywhere. always make money. But I'm not a tech guy. I'm not a coder. My wife, she is not a tech person or a coder. We had our co-founder, the tech guy. We did not have to think about it. He was 45, and I, and I still love him to this day because he's a great guy, but, but he was at a different point in his life. His mm-hmm. wife was at a different point in her life. There, he had some family. He was taking care of his family. He, and then all of a sudden, this like snowstorm of, of health problems, family problems, sibling problems, money problems, park bench. You know, we as founders hadn't ever been paid. Like we would just put money in and then we were just sucking our shareholder loan out, you know, just to um, live. <laughs> like no, no, no salary. Like still to this day, I'm the lowest paid person in the entire company. Oh um and that's another thing that, I, that when I went to Silicon Valley, other entrepreneurs do not do. And I think mm. it's absolutely ludicrous. It's mm. like, dude, you're not doing this for the salary now. You're doing this for the payout later. Yeah. Um, that's a totally other topic. Um, so, so the guy he called me. He's like, Grant. So I'm sitting there. And I'm in this hotel room in L.A. All this legal stuff is happening. Um, all this money is now. And, and then he calls me. He's like, Grant, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, what? And he's like, I, my wife, she doesn't, she doesn't believe in this. She's just like, you know, and he's like, he, I could sense it's like, this was not all his thought. He's like, it's mm-hmm. tough. And I got, it's a health problem. My doctor just said I have too much stress and I'm having heart problems. And I was like, ugh. And so he, I was like, oh, okay, like I get it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and he was, I've heard so many issues of co-founder breakups, um, yeah. He, he was literally, I couldn't ask for anything better. Like he was the best separation uh, I could even ask for. Um, there, we can go into details of that if you want. But uh, he was leaving me. So my tech guy's leaving me. I have no money in my bank account. I have to go home. We just signed this new office space. So I had to find a way to escape this office space, lose all this deposit money, get rid of everybody, mm-hmm. and go to zero and start over again. Um, that was a huge, huge adversary, adversity, but what I, what I yearn for, and this is, th- this was the moment where that you got to have a testimony. I've heard it before, mm-hmm. but you got to have a testimony or in order to have a testimony, you got to have a test. Like this was the moment where I totally went over the hump mm-hmm. to loving tests, mm-hmm. like really loving, loving mm-hmm. the test because it was because of this moment that we refined our our onboarding and customer service. And when you buy Parkbench, this is what you do to make money off it. Mm. 
Because if we could figure out how to condense the time frame by which someone paid us money and it didn't take them six to 12 months to get a return, they could get it in 30 days because hmm. they focused on doing X, Y, Z. It was because of this, we were sitting in this empty office space after getting rid of everybody and just, just literally being like, what are we going to do? And I was just sitting there just thinking. And it was because hmm. of this moment and every single time we've ever had adversity, this is where the creativity comes. Hmm. Um, we came up with our, what is now the bedrock that I came up with a new way of prospecting. This mm -hmm. is where I've just completely re came, uh, refined how you use a neighborhood website to make money. And I'm now trademark interview based prospecting. Mm. Nice. Um, and, and what's called like the prospect interview. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so now that's what's made now so many of my clients money is following this and it all came from that adversity. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was year two in the business. Um, that entire time years, years two and three, we're now in year four years, two and three, I didn't have a home. Um, I lived out of a suitcase the entire time. I literally, my, my driver's license, like the government of Canada does know this. And if they ever watch this, it's, I have a real address now and my license, but for two years, my address was my office <laughs> and, and I didn't have a home because I was just traveling from city to city to city to sell this thing. Um, and it was, it was sometimes got tough because, mm. you know, I'm more able to do it, but uh, Amanda, my wife and my co-founder, like she didn't necessarily like all the hotels that we were staying in. Mm um to make it work uh i fractured my back you know and i'm a big health guy so i fractured my back i gained 50 pounds dang um i'm now 25 pounds less than that nice. i'm still a lot bigger than i than i used to be mm -hmm. um and so all these things you know makes you one appreciate good health makes you appreciate mm -hmm. the team when the team is performing I can't do this without a team. And so when they're performing, when they're enjoying it and I'm having mm. fun, mm. like there are definitely moments where you do not have fun. Mm. And so you need all that darkness to then really appreciate the lightness because mm. then when you appreciate it, it then starts to happen more because you're, you're putting out like gratitude for what you're getting, which mm. then makes other people, like the people on your team, no one will ever see I take them for granted. Mm. Um, and, and that's what has allowed me to build a team and a bigger team and a, an amazing culture that people can now watch. And that's what's built the company. And that's what gets the client results. Mm. Um, it wasn't because of all this hurt adversity with my health that like now it's, I just have some non-negotiables when it comes to my health because I'm just mm. way happier and I perform better. Um, the relationship, like there were moments when Amanda and I like – we're almost, you know, going to be over. And that's scary because we started the company together. Mm -hmm. We have this relationship together. Um, we were boyfriend, girlfriend, then we were engaged. Now we're getting married in March. Like on paper, yes. we're, we're married, Congrats. you know, and, and there were so many moments where like, and, and our, some of the people on the team don't know this, but like, yeah, we were, we were almost going to go separate mm -hmm. ways. And, now that we overcame that, and luckily we've had some coaches and mentors to help us get us through that, mm -hmm. you now appreciate it so much more because the death, the fear of death of mm -hmm. this relationship and this thing that's been able to give me so much happiness and so much growth, to, to, to feel that that could go away, you know, you'll do anything to make sure it doesn't. Dude, damn. Powerful, powerful grant. Dude, you're sharing the gold. Uh, we do have some comments in here. I did tag, tag uh, Brooke Dresat. Uh, she's in Huntington Beach. She has a company called Beach City Sports, and it's all about local um, sports and stuff. So I highly recommend you two connect. Um, cool. She put her email yeah, yeah. in there. Sylvia said, powerful. Mandy said, I love how you kept on following your heart because you knew it would serve others greatly even after so many setbacks. Kudos. That's beautiful. And uh, Paul McFarland said, just looked at park, parkbench.com. We should talk ASAP for five minutes regarding your VP. I don't know what VP is, but 
Anyways, so we've got a couple people in there cool. to connect with after the video, so make sure you do that. And if anybody has any questions for Grant, you know, feel free. Throw them in the comments because he's here with us live. And uh, Grant, you know, I, I wanted to dive in a little bit more to the philosophies that you're really teaching and instilling in your in your team that has your company work so well. And one of the specific things that you're doing that I just want to start this off, kick it off with, is you're documenting the journey. You know, you're, you're taking video behind the scenes, what's going on. So tell us about why you're doing that, the philosophy, and, and what it's doing for the company. First and foremost, the documenting of the journey mm -hmm. is uh, to make our – culture to have more fun yeah yeah when 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 like we are a people first company mm. and people say that mm. a lot mm. but what are they actually doing to show mm. that they're a people first company so when we thought about documenting it we're all like oh we're all gonna be like youtube stars, stars as a yeah. joke <laughs> Um, and, and it wasn't about us. It wasn't about the Grant and Amanda show, mm. which so many people who are vlogging and documenting, it's about them. Mm. So, if it, so if it, I don't care about me. I care about we. I care about the team. I care about – because they're the ones who are who's giving me my life. Yeah. So for this one, this was like just us wanting to have someone to follow us around because we have so much fun, you know, and – and we could then watch every week. We watch our own episodes and we like over drinks and we clap. We, we have fun. We laugh. So it's like a get to reflect on it all. Um, so first and foremost, it was all about helping us have more fun. And mm. this is one of the hacks that we've had as entrepreneurs, which mm. is I used to follow this guy, Jason Nazar. Um, he owned this company called DocStock. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of like coaching and teaching. And um, his company was bought by QuickBooks. And one of the things mm. he always said, which – I totally believe, and now I just have a new spin on it, mm -hmm. um, because he made it sound like, this was his words, you can have a startup and one other thing. Mm. That's it. You can have a startup and one other thing. If you're going to make your startup work, if you're going to make your business work, you can have a startup and one other thing. Mm. And that was good because it got me to cut out a whole bunch of stuff, and it really did help me progress because I just had my mind on my company and then my relationship with Amanda, and then that was where the health started you having some issues. And so then our first hack was Amanda and I would work out together. Mm. So now we're spending time together and we're getting our health. Yep. So, so what else do we want? And I was like, in an ideal world, I don't have a startup and, and, and one other thing. I have everything. Mm. So what is my everything? My everything is I have a whole bunch of friends I have fun with and party with and hang out with and we laugh with. So we need to hire our friends. Now, we didn't hire our friends, <laughs> um, but we hired people that we felt would be would our be friends. Dumb, and yes. really, when we think about where we want to go, some of our friends are not the people that we want to have around us. I love them, but they're not the kinds of people that I want for my new self and my new higher mm -hmm. self and, and the, where I want to go as a business. Mm -hmm. So we hired people based on purely – I, mm. and, and this is like, there's good and bad about this, but I think there's more so good, which if the person has the right values and attitude, you can mm. teach them anything. Yeah. You know, at some point you will want specialists and experts mm. when you get a lot bigger and you scale the company. Now that we're at 30 people, like there's going to be other people that we need in the company who we need to make sure there's a culture fit, but also the, the skill, the expertise needs yeah. to be there yeah. um, and less of a culture fit. But at the very beginning, when you're slugging it out to try mm. and get this, uh, anything off the ground, to be able to have, do it with a bunch of group of people where you can hang out 12 hours a day, mm. seven days a week, you work out together, you eat together, you party together, you do everything together. Yeah. Like it became like our own little frat house and sorority, <laughs> like co-ed thing. And, and so that was how we hacked having friends and having fun we, we work out together. We still, to this day, we have a group CrossFit two times a week with the company. So we rent out the gym. We have a trainer. And then we go sweat it out together after a long, hard day. Yep. Um, and so we hacked that out. And so that, that's, that was my first philosophy. You can have a startup and one other thing. But now my new twist on it is make your startup everything. everything. Wow. You can have one thing that has nothing to do with your startup. Mm. And for me, that's tennis. Mm. I want to I want to play tennis on my own with good tennis players. That's what that was my main sport. That's my thing. That's nothing to do with my business. Right. It feeds my soul. I love it. 
But everything else I want in life, family, friends, laughter, fun, adventure, money, growth, self-development, all that stuff, it's all wrapped in my company. And I do the same thing for my people. Everything they want in life is all wrapped up within the company. Mm. So, so my mindset for them was, you know, I don't want to, it's not how do I get you to stay at the company longer? How do I get you to work longer hours? Mm. It's how do I make you want to be here in the office more than you want to be at home? Mm. How do I make the people at this company, you want to hang around more than your other friends? Mm. And, and, and if I just think about what do you want, what are you looking for? And how do I wrap that into the company? Yeah. Then you will stay later because you just enjoy it. You will mm. hang out with us on weekends. And that creates a cohesion where one of my philosophies is coworkers mm -hmm. is a losing team. If you look at all the dynasties in sports, mm -hmm. they're not, they're not teammates. teammates. They're brothers and they're sisters. They're brothers. They're family. They're brothers. They're sisters. They're yeah. family. Yeah. They do everything together. Yeah. yeah. So coworkers and teammates mm. is the wrong, which is why I think culture is actually the wrong word. Mm. Because culture is a lingo made in the business world mm. to talk about coworkers having a culture. Mm. So we have a lifestyle. Oof. There's a lifestyle that the people at our company live. Here is what we want to do in our life. Here is how we live. We invite people to join us. Mm. And, and, and you, want to, you either want to live our life or you don't. And if you don't, that's okay. Don't work here. Mm. And, and so that's by making it a lifestyle. When people say oh, as, you, as your company grows, the culture declines, people, there, there, there's a certain lifestyle that hundreds upon thousands of people want to live. Mm. Yeah. So you talk about living a lifestyle, you can grow and scale that number out and everyone will be living the same lifestyle mm. that can scale. Damn. So, so that was, um, something that we made up to, cause I hated saying the word culture. Like it just didn't gel with what we were trying to create mm. with that, like cohesion, that brotherhood and that sisterhood and stuff yeah. like that. Um, some of the other uh, philosophies, like, and this is good and bad. I'm kind of working on the wording for this one. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to thank my dad for, for, I hated him when I grew up because he <laughs> asked me this question every single day. And I, and I never had a good answer for him. Mm -hmm. I was ne it was never a good enough answer for him. He kept asking me, he's like, what did you achieve today? Mm. Wow. And I was like, yeah, I played basketball with my friends. He's like, no, what did you achieve today? Mm. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I went to school. What did you achieve? And I'm like, I, and I would just walk out. And, he, and, I'd walk, and every day I'd walk into his office. And he was working. And he would just ask that question. I freaking hate it. And then only later in life did that like subconsciously keep going into my head of what did I achieve? Because um, I'm a bit like Park Bench. We have this thing called PBs, which mm. is play on words, personal bests. Mm. Yes. Because that's an achievement. Yes. And right. so how, what, are your, what are your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly personal bests mm. in all areas of your life? Mm. You should track it. You should measure it. And that should be what you try to do every single day is beat one of them. Mm. There's got to be a personal best that you can beat today. Wow. And then when you work out your week, there's got to be at least one thing that you break every single week. Wow. And then you're always achieving something. You'll, you'll be doing a bunch of activity, moving things a bunch of forward, but there's always going to be this achievement thing. And so it's this idea that you, what is a result that you can actually be proud of because it was mm -hmm. a personal best or you have a benchmark and you did meet or surpass that mm -hmm. like standard. Um, so that is something that it, it, it's, it's uh, mentally and ex draining and emotionally exhausting because sometimes it puts a lot of pressure on you to mm -hmm. perform and to achieve. Um, and, and so when I was at Tony Robbins date with destiny, it was like about rewording this question so that I can appreciate the people yeah. in the process yeah. more yeah. while trying to achieve. Cause if I just say, what did you achieve today? I'm just like, get out of my way. Like right. I'm going right. somewhere, you know, and, and that's not good for my, my, me and my relationships and my, uh, with anyone. And cause I'm, sometimes I can be a little bit too like direct and blunt and, um, isolation, right. isolated, um, but by the same time, that phrase has allowed me 
to objectively look at myself and be like, am I achieving or am I just doing mm. things? And I love this because either way, we're going to be investing our life force energy. The, the seconds are ticking, right? Talking about life and death. Like we're going to die at some point. That's guaranteed. Yeah. So it's like the personal best philosophy is while you're here, get the most out of every single moment, whether that's in your health, your relationships, your business, the income, the spirituality, whatever that is, what's the personal best, dude? That's, that's phenomenal philosophy. Yeah. Really and then, so the, the final one um, come, came from that one uh, <laughs> that I like sharing because this, again, hopes – I hope this helps like at least one or some entrepreneurs or, or people out there. This advice that we've all been getting about life and business is a marathon. Mm. Mm. It's a bunch of fucking bullshit. <laughs> Get him a soapbox, people. Get him a soapbox. <laughs> dude, it is the worst advice I have ever heard. And it and is spoken like the gospel. It is not a marathon. <laughs> Now, I will preface it with saying it's not a sprint, uh, singular, okay? It's not a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, it is a series of sprints. Yes, yes. This is what life is. Case in point, and, I, and I'm, as a kinesiologist, as like a health person, it started out as a very uh, physiological like answer. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't run a marathon, stop, rest for minutes or hours and then start again like you do in life which is you get up you do stuff and then you go to bed yep. and then you get up you do stuff and you go to bed yeah that's so that is you get up and the elite people the people who are crushing it and achieving the people that we look up to they are sprinting all day mm. they're sprinting in their work they're sprinting in their relationships they're sprinting in their health they're sprinting in all areas of their life they're doing as much as they possibly can in that 18, 20, 16 hour day, whatever it is for you. And then they go to bed and they rest and they do it again. And the reason why from a business standpoint, I'm, I'm pro people thinking about business as a series of sprints hmm. because it gets you to move faster from task to task to task to task because you're treating everything like a sprint. And then what happens is, and this is the reason why all the greats are actually greater even when they're older. Mm. You, act, you are not a better marathoner when you are older. <laughs> your body deteriorates because it's so bad on your joints to keep moving and not rest. Whereas a sprinter, you actually get faster the more you sprint mm. and the amount of time you need in between sprints to do it again goes down. Mm. Hockey players know this because they sprint on the ice for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. And the best athletes who are like Sidney Crosby and whatever, they're t they're, they don't need as much rest on the bench before they go out and do it again at the same high level. Mm. And, and they, didn't develop, they didn't have that right away. They developed it over time. Mm. Just like all great entrepreneurs, they, they actually, this is why Gary Vee says, I'm better at 40 than I was in my 20s and 30s. And it's because he, at his 20s, he was sprinting. Then he got better in his 30s and was able to do more in a 24-hour period than he did in his 20s, right. and he needed, le needed less rest to go do it again, and so now he's doing even better when he's 40. This mm -hmm. is why Tony Robbins is an animal at 60, mm -hmm. he almost is, where it's like, dude, I can't do what you do, and I'm half your age. <laughs> even if I had the intelligence, the physical mm -hmm. stuff that he is doing, and and. When, when it comes to business, again, marathoners, you're, you're, you're at a race pace. They, the, those runners can go faster. They're just choosing not to to do this marathon. Right. That is ridiculous in business. Mm -hmm. You need to be going as fast as you humanly possibly can all day, every day, all day, every day. Sprint, 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 sleep, sprint, sleep, sprint, sleep. And, and so when you don't think of business as a marathon, you think of a sprint, it changes the way you think on a day-to-day -day basis. It changes the way you move, changes the way um, you behave. And as a result of, of all that, changes the way you, all your feelings and the energy you have every day changes when you think of it as a sprint versus a marathon. And then it allow, it, it, you get better results out of it.
Yeah, it's like the conversation about how you approach life, the actions, the thoughts, the feelings, all of it just starts becoming drive, create, build, accomplish, achieve, urgency, and celebrate, massive celebration too. Like just because it's like a lot of quick movements doesn't mean it's it's shallow on the fulfillment. We can yep. sprint, 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 and that's a sprint of achievement, sprint of fulfillment, sprint of love, sprint of gratitude, and like go deep, go like how do you you know embrace gratitude and live gratitude and ooze gratitude? Like that's a sprint to go as deep and as much as possible. Yeah, you have a goal. Yeah. Cross a hundred meter line yep. or whatever that, and, and so whatever that goal is, why not get there as fast as possible? Yep. <laughs> Why not love on your spouse as fast as possible? Mm. Maybe mm. not in the bedroom, but like, right? But like the <laughs> idea of, of, of making, right? Making them feel like you're loving them yes. and not wait. Mm. Do it now. Mm. Well, and, and same with your staff, same with your employees, mm. same with your health. Like, mm. don't just like dilly down in the gym. Like, go work it. And this is why it's also funny, this whole life is business and marathon thing. You know what marathoners do? You know the number one training tactic for marathoners? What? Sprinting. <laughs> The number one tech training method right now, and this is why the, the other, the other uh, bad advice is the stamina over strength. Mm. Bullshit. Mm. Strength over stamina. Again, mm. the number one training tactic to be good at a marathon, mm. right? So the idea that life is this long journey yeah. is true. Business is a long journey. Yeah. So if you want to get really good at it, you focus on strength, just mm. like marathoners. In order to be really good at this long journey, they mm. focus on strength training and sprinting. And that, funny enough, just makes them good at this long journey. They yeah. don't just run forever to be good at running forever. They focus on strength and sprinting. And, and, and the whole strength concept is emotional strength, spiritual strength, physical strength. Mm. Like you need that. That's the difference maker. Anyone, once you have a vision, once you have a purpose mm. and, and, and you're energized by it, dude, you mm. can go forever. Yeah. But do you have the emotional strength to fire people and, hi and, and do you have the emotional strength um, to, you know, have tough conversations with your staff to elevate their performance? Yep. Do you have the physical strength to bring it to a meeting when your energy is down? Hmm. Like, and do you have the spiritual strength to be able to really perceive things in a constructive way to help hmm. you move forward? Dude. And, and that's why strength is something that that's not, uh, to me, that's the difference maker between entrepreneurs is strength, not stamina. Everyone's Dude. got stamina. I know, right? Everyone could just sit there and take life's punches, but are you able to like move forward and use it constructively and create and achieve your goal in spite of that? Like life's gonna hit you either way. Like you don't need stamina yeah. either way. You're gonna And get if you hit. feel and if you feel that you don't have the stamina, <laughs> then I would question what you're doing. Mm. Mm. Damn. Has dude. nothing to do with your ability to have stamina. It has to, has to do with what you're doing. Yeah, dude. I love it. So we're beginning to wrap this up, man. And what are the final takeaways, the new reality our audience is stepping into because of this interview, man? If I could, you know, it's, it's always, I mean, it's hopefully, again, there's so much stuff to say, but if I could wrap, wrap it all up, um, if you want to, and this is like a Jim Rohn. I love Jim Rohn. Mm -hmm. um, one of my first kind of people I subscribed to in the yeah. self-development world. And his line was this, in order to change your life, you need to change your life. Mm. Mm. And I just apply that to every other thing. In order to change your business, you got to change your business. Mm. In order to change your relationship, you got to change your relationship. <laughs> And same with health, every, all of it. Yeah. And, and don't expect it to be easy. Mm. Don't, ex, like, don't expect there to be no awkwardness mm. wow. and discomfort. Like there is supposed to be, that is the gate to greatness yes. is you have to over get through that awkwardness, get through that comfort. Mm. You don't, you, you can't be married for 60 years, hundred years, mm. 30 years or whatever, and then just always be passionate all the time. Mm. That is poppycock. That is yeah. absolute nonsense. <laughs> and then when you, and then when you're trying to like bring the passion back, it's going to be awkward as shit. 
Yeah. Well, it's like it's like being a, a kid as well. A baby like is conditioned is is subconsciously conditioned to screw up on its way crawling and walking and running. Like we're lucky we have that built into us because if we didn't, there would be a lot of people who sit on their butt and like it's too hard. <laughs> Dude. I love it. 100%. You're exactly right. It starts from day one. Yes. Yes, man. So we got it built into us. Everyone have faith that you, we can do this. You can do this. You're capable. Grant, how do people stay connected with you? What do you want them to do next, man? Uh, if you want to email me, uh, grant at parkbench.com, Facebook, social media, tw- uh, Facebook, Twitter. I'm not really on Twitter, but Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, at grantfsofficial. Damn you to whoever owns Grant FS. I will I will get it from you at some point. So it's Grant FS official. <laughs> Follow me on social media. Um, I do I do like you know little live videos where I'm trying to like reflect every day because mm-hmm. I, I won't journal, but I can you know, I do Facebook Live love and it. just kind of reflect on the day. I love it. Um, so I'm doing that as I grow my company, um, and uh, I'm always happy to help. Dude, you're a blessing, man. Keep blessing people in your life. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate being on here and I hope uh, everyone listening uh, got some value and can be better and achieve their goals faster. Definitely, man. We're excited to see you crush your goals, baby. 10 million. Is that that what it is this year? 10 million, That was it, man. I want to get into the the eight figures. Yes. Let's go, man. I'm excited to celebrate with you, man. Keep us posted. Keep up the amazing work. And dude, have a blessed day, blessed week, and the best 2018 ever. Hey, thank you, man. All right. Take care, Grant.